Und der Tag! Since that trembling teenager of touch and tease first tiptoed onto this storied stage, wreathed in red, restored to this great gallery of the game, a walking work of art, vintage beyond valuation. Donatelli. Mm, that voice. We spoke with Peter when I worked at uh, News Talk ZB. It is so good to have you back, mate. And what a brilliant, exciting, unpredictable. I'm being like you, Hal. I mean, every adjective I could possibly think of. Can I just say what a great start to the EPL season it has been? Yeah, it's been fantastic. Um, we always seem to feel as though we've sort of run out of narratives and then they refresh themselves. And, and we've had a fantastic set of stories. We've had brilliant games. Chelsea Spurs was a fantastic game. Newcastle Manchester City, Leeds beating Chelsea, and then the other night, you know, Manchester United, Liverpool turned up a result that really nobody, certainly from a neutral perspective, could see coming. It's been a, it's been a fantastic start to the, um, to the new campaign. A couple of questions, of course, straight off the bat. Can Man City be stopped? I know that they're not at the top at the moment. It's glorious to see North London up the top. I mean, the last time Spurs and Arsenal were battling for a title was probably back in 71 when Arsenal did the double, I think. But, you know, you know <laughs> as it unfolds, do you expect Man City to still be the side that everyone has to catch? I think every weekend the rest of them are desperate for City to drop points only because they know that that is going to happen pretty rarely. Um, so the fact that City did drop points at Newcastle last weekend was a, a terrifically sort of incentivizing moment for the rest of the league because, yeah, everything logical points to the fact that City will be the strongest team. Uh, and, of course, the fact that Liverpool have not started well plays into that narrative too. And, yeah, Arsenal have started very well, and so have Tottenham and one or two others. Um, but in all of those cases, uh, you know, the jury's out. Can they sustain it? In City's case, we already know that they can because they have time after time in recent years. So, yeah, City, without question, the ones to chase, especially now they've got this, um, this glitzy new striker called Haaland. And not bad, is he? Um, he's actually a lot physically bigger than what I actually thought and expected. I know I've seen him play for Dortmund, but he is really a physical beast, isn't he? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really interesting talking to, you know, the ex-professionals that, as you know, are, are in our industry, the pundits, um, who've all played the game at the highest level and, and think they've seen and done it all. And each of them, it's funny, when they suddenly come up face to face with him and see him in the flesh, they come away and they say, wow, that guy is big, you know, and they've all played against top athletes in their time. Um, he, he is an exceptional physical specimen. Um, that's one thing. He's also a terrific athlete. He is fast. He is strong. You know, he's not just a big guy. He's a very coordinated guy. He's very smart with the ball at his feet. He's got an excellent football brain. I, you know, it, it, you say all that and you think this must be the greatest player there's ever been. He, he still has to prove that he might be. Um, you know, he's a way to go in that regard. But he has all of the tools uh, all of the physical and mental tools. Uh, and I say mental because he doesn't appear to feel pressure either. He he laughs in the face of it. The expectation on him is absolutely massive. But he, he smiles, gets on with it, scores his goals, does his thing. Um, and if he stays fit over the course of a, a long career, which appears to lie ahead of him, you know, he could be a record breaker. He could he could smash the goals records of here, there, club, Premier League, whatever, for his country and so on. Um, he's a big star. Peter Drury is with us on the platform. The voice, of course, you recognise. He's been calling the English Premier League for decades, now working for NBC, calling it for America. And we'll talk about that in a second. The, 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 the results that we've had over the first few weeks, and tomorrow night, um, New Zealand time, Man United go to Southampton after that win against Liverpool. Uh, the, but the results that we're having, the point I'm making simply is that 
Uh, you know, that is this just the start of the season where teams appear to all be even and you get Chelsea losing it at Leeds, uh, you know, and you get uh, Brentford smacking Man United and uh, Liverpool getting off to a rough start. Do you think it will even itself out and those teams with the resources are again float to the top or, or are we going to see a top four this year, which actually includes names that we're not expecting? Well, uh, history tells us that what you started out um, with as your supposition is likely to be true, and that is that the stronger teams will rise to the top. The cream will rise. Um, but we're, we're always seduced by these early weeks, by the surprise results that come up, and we're, we're sort of tantalised by the possibility that there might be different names. You know, Brighton have started very well, and, and they actually had a good season last year. Uh, Fulham have started very well. They're only just promoted. I'd be amazed if they were still in the top five or six for very long. But, um, you know, Liverpool have already dropped seven points from the first nine. And if you're going to be champions, you probably aren't going to be able to drop more than, say, 25 points in the whole of the season. You know, they, they've already lost a big of their margin for error. Um, and so who knows how it'll finally shape up. But at the moment, at the moment, there, there are so many imponderables happening, so many... Um, almost unthinkables uh, have happened in the first two or three weeks of the season that it's, it's hard to make any sort of um, rational uh, suggestion as to how, how it will all shake down. You are now working for NBC. So how did that come about? Because we switch on our tellies here in the wee hours of the morning, as you know, in New Zealand, to get up at three o'clock, and I'm like idiots to watch these games. You know? um, and, <laughs> and, and, and love hearing your voice, and we don't get it anymore. Well, do you know what? That is a, a great source of regret to me in, in many ways. Um, but uh, NBC came <laughs> and offered me a job and, and it, it was um, a lovely opportunity to, to shake things up in my professional career after, as you say, having, having uh, called the Premier League for the sort of global English audience for, for quite a few years now. Um, the American market is a very exciting one. Um, you know, in, in amongst all of their traditional sports, NFL and, and basketball and baseball, Premier League uh, soccer, as they call it, is um, is breaking through hugely, uh, and it's it's a great wave to to be sort of riding on, uh, and I'm excited to be doing it. But in amongst that, I've got to say that I really am missing, uh, and I mean this very sincerely, the the international audience that I have enjoyed for, for so many years uh, in your part of the world, in, in New Zealand and, and indeed Australia and all over Africa and all over Asia as well. You know, um, India has a massive following, extraordinarily, for, for a cricket mad nation for the English Premier League and, and um, you know, South Africa, Nigeria, um, many of the sort of um, sports mad Western African countries and so on. Um, so I, I'm really missing that. I really am. Um, but it was a great opportunity for me. And whilst I'm missing one, I'm lucky enough to be enjoying another. Peter Drury is with us. Do you miss Jim? I do. Go on. I do miss Jim. Go on. But we're on the circuit still together. So I don't have to admit, I mean, you may not hear me with him, but I see him. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're, he's still out doing it and I'm still out doing it. And and uh, you know how these things work, Martin. You're in you're in media rooms together, and so on. So um, it's okay. We're still in touch. The weather has been absolutely gorgeous for watching football in England, and you know, and once again, it's just such a captivating season. You know, we keep saying we said this last time we spoke, didn't we, Peter? That it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But to me, the essence doesn't actually change. You hear that sound coming out your TV set all this way away, twelve thousand miles away. It's what gripped me when I was a little kid. The noise that comes out of those grounds. It's, I just find it intoxicating. Yeah, well, it is. It is. And, and we're so lucky. And, and I have said this to you be, before, Martin, but we're so lucky. You know, we're a little dot on the map of the world here in England. We're a tiny island with ideas above our station. And, and we have this league, which has become the International League. Um, and, and it's such a great stroke of fortune for us. You know, there are other great European football leagues um, in, in Spain and in Germany and in Italy and so on. Famous leagues with famous clubs. But I guess over 30 years, the marketing of the Premier League um, and the finance that it has raised 
has enabled it to attract the world's top stars, broadly speaking. Um, and so right on our doorstep, we have teams which, which traditionally and, and, and back in your childhood and mine were, were essentially local teams uh, supported by local people within the country and which have now become international brands um, and have attracted this, this vast international audience. And, and we're just very, very lucky that, that we have it, you know, in, right in front of us on this, as I say, little dot on the map. Um, and and I, I hope we'll never take it for granted because cause it's immensely fortunate for, for football fans in this country that, that we do have it. Again, thank you so much for your time. Um, you're so generous uh, with it. Lovely to hear your voice again. I'm sure all the fans here will be delighted to know that you are still there, you are still out there calling this beloved game. And um, and um, and hopefully at some stage for us United fans who've been a bit suffering for the next 10 years, you might even call us winning a title once in my lifetime again. Do you know what? It could happen. It, well, after seeing what I saw on Monday, anything could happen. Awesome, Peter. Thank you so much, mate. Lovely talking to you, eh? Delightful. Cheers, Martin. Take care.